Well, faced with poor quality virus data, Wall Street is turning to what's known as alternative sources to find out what's going on with the economy. Steve Leisman has been looking into a few of them and, of course, that big Goldman Sachs call on GDP and unemployment. Steve, good morning. Yeah, just massive. And the two stories are kind of linked, Sarah, because some of this alternative data is informing uh, Goldman's uh, forecast and its outlook. Yeah, the data that's going to come out is going to be lagged, and it's not really suited for dealing with a shock that's unexpected like this. So they are using alternative data. Before I get there, let me show you this Goldman Sachs downgrade that they were talking about, or economic GDP downgrade, that Sarah was talking about in the last half hour. Uh, first of all, the big one of the bigger surprises to me is how much weakness they see, even in the first quarter, which we're ending today, down 9%. And that's down from 6% on the prior forecast. Now they're down another 10 percentage points here for the second quarter. And there's the rebound, which uh, Jimmy was asking about, that V, but it's not so much of a V. It's a 19% rebound, which is better than it had been. But you see, for the whole year, you don't make it up because it's not a perfect V. So you still end up being down 6%. Look, these numbers are not perfect. They're not even close Goldman says they're subject to huge error, but what we're watching this to see is the outlook getting worse or is it getting better and how much rebound is expected. Goldman saying in its commentary the anecdotal evidence and the sky-high jobless claims numbers show an even bigger output and especially labor market collapse than we had anticipated. On the other hand, both monetary and fiscal policy are easing dramatically further, which will tend to contain these second-round effects and add to growth down the road. So some positive aspects from the stimulus expected there. So how does Goldman do this? What are other economists doing? They put together, uh, among other things, a consumer activity impact index that they're looking at, where they look at things like railroad loadings and transportation and hotels and sporting events. And you can see they're tracking this for both China and the U.S. together which doesn't give you the greatest outlook here because it shows the steep drop here in the U.S. very much mirroring the steep drop in China. And you can see that long, slow road back over at least a two- or three-month period for China. The question is whether we can avoid that really L-looking uh, rebound and come up with more of a V. Another thing, TD Securities looking at City Mapper data and tracking mobility across six U.S. states. And you can see it's crashed down and it remains relatively flat. Why do we look at this? It's not surprising. Reason we look at it is because we want to see any early signs we can find of a pickup in that mobility. This right now is probably a good sign because we're watching for containment of the virus. This decline in mobility is something tells us that those shelter in place rules are being followed across the country. So Sarah, we continue to monitor this. These numbers are probably are almost certainly not right. But as they perhaps the data improves and the outlook improves, we might get an early read that might be better than the virus tracking data that's out there from the medical community.